Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? She who laughs last is the name of my talk. She who laughs <laughs> lasts. What does that mean? It means that we can use humor and laughter and joy and optimism to build personal resilience. This is not just some fluffy topic. This is life and death. <laughs> because if you can't find something, anything to laugh about in this topsy-turvy, Kardashian-infested, <laughs> wild and wacky world we're living in, then you might as well get in your car right now and drive yourself to the nearest funny farm because that's where we're going to find you. Sitting in the corner of a padded cell, trussed up in a straitjacket, rocking back and forth, singing, and the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. Because you know what I found? Sanity is a slippery slope. <laughs> it could happen to any one of us at any moment. In fact, sanity is a responsibility, not a right. We are each responsible for our own sanity. And I already know what I'm going to say when they fit me for my straitjacket. That's right, I said when. Because I know it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. Frankly, I can't believe I've escaped the restraints for this long. I already know what I'm going to say when they're stuffing my arms into that long straight jacket sleeve. I'm going to look at the, at the paramedic and go, can I see this in another color? Because I hate to wear white after Labor Day. If you can't find something to laugh about, you're going to go nuts. I used to work with this woman named Jenny, worked in this office with this woman named Jenny, and Jenny was one of these women who felt that it was her sole responsibility to hold the universe together. Do you know these women? Are you one of these women? <laughs> and I used to try to bring her out. I'd try to ask her, you know, come, come have lunch with us. You know, I don't have time for lunch. I have to stay here at my desk. Jack might need something. He might call in from the road. Jack was her boss. And from what I had seen from Jack, his main goal was to improve his golf score. He had no interest in anything work-related. So I go, come on, Jenny. We both know Jack's on the 14th hole at Myrtle Beach right now. He doesn't even remember your name. Come out with us. No. I still can't do it. It is me that is holding this entire office together. I have to be the responsible one. Meanwhile, I'm walking out the front door. I look at our receptionist. I go, Mary, if Jerry calls looking for me, tell him I'm at a three-hour meeting. And she just laughs. A couple months later, I'm pulling into the parking lot at work. There's an ambulance parked out front. I walk in the front door, I go, Mary, what's going on? She goes, Jenny had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> they found this woman in her cubicle, under her desk, in the fetal position, having a full-on breakdown. And as the paramedics are wheeling her away, I lean down and whisper in her ear, you should have taken a lunch. The moral of this story is take a lunch. <laughs> take a lunch, whatever that means to you in your world. Take some time for yourself. Believe it or not, the world will continue to revolve. 
even if you're gone for a few hours, we'll still get, we'll still get by. Right? Because you've got to let some steam out of the pressure cooker, don't you? And laughter is one of the greatest escape valves we have. In fact, research says that one good belly laugh relieves 15 minutes of stress-related tension in the human body. Right now, I want you to turn to the person next to you. I want you to give them the best belly laugh you can muster. Go. That's it. No, it's not laughing at each other, ma'am. One good belly laugh relieves 15 minutes of stress-related tension in the human body. We have to let it out, ladies. I think of my job description as, uh, this is my self-written job description. My job is to keep an eye on humanity and report back. <laughs> you think you're watching me? No. I'm watching you. And I have to tell you, some very disturbing things have come up in my report lately. There seems to be an increased sighting of nasty, angry, stressed out, toxic people. And they seem to be crossing my path at an alarming rate. You ever found yourself face to face with one of these toxic types? One of these people who's nothing but negativity with a pulse? And they want to suck you into their negativity vortex? But you don't have to go. Don't go. You don't have to engage. Here's what you do instead. Maintain eye contact, smile, even though you don't mean it. And while they're ranting uncontrollably, you just subtly start moving your hips back and forth. <laughs> yes, that, that does sound serious, yeah. <laughs> now they're freaking out because they have no idea what you're doing. In mid-tirade, they go, what are you doing? You go, frankly, you're starting to agitate me. <laughs> Let's all do it together in your seats. Just try it. Let's see. I want to see it. Let's see it. Feels kind of good, doesn't it? You're never going to forget this because it's in your head now. Forever. You're welcome. I've created several stress-busting tools that you can find videos of on my website, KarenRuth.com. That's Karen with a Y. Why? Because I said so. But have you noticed that the overly stressed are easy to spot in a crowd? <laughs> Don't look at anyone right now. <laughs> because overly stressed people have the same three characteristics. Darting eyes, <laughs> nervous hands, and a visible facial tick. I call these poor souls the bird people. <laughs> We've all seen the bird people. We know the bird people. We've just never had a name for them before. Now you do. You're welcome. <laughs> you can spot the bird people because they're always scanning their environment for danger. They're always on the lookout for prey. These are the people that are always waiting for the other shoe to drop. And these are the people who can be depended upon to predict doom in every scenario. I was doing a conference, keynote, uh, opening keynote at a conference, and 8.30 in the morning was my start time. It was about 7 a.m., and I realized I needed some more copies of my handouts. So I go down to the copy center at the hotel. There's no one around. There's one of these counters that you can lift up, and then there's a copy machine behind the counter. So I make an executive decision. <laughs> I lift the counter, I go back, I, st I find the start button on this huge copy machine, get it all warmed up, figure it out, start making my copies. Now, I'm coming back to pay for the copies. I'm not trying to steal copies. It's important to me that you know that. 
and I'm feeling pretty proud of myself. I got my coffee, my project's humming along, and then all of a sudden, standing in front of me, there she is with her name badge and her ring of keys. Joan, queen of the bird people. <laughs> Joan stands in the middle of the room trying to take it all in. She rattles her keys menacingly and screams at me, what in the hell do you think you're doing? I'm a comedian. My answer was, I think I'm making copies. <laughs> and then she goes off. No one is allowed behind this counter. No one <laughs> is allowed to operate this machinery without my express permission. And I say, machinery, Joan, really? It's a copier, not a combine. <laughs> and then I notice her eyes get even bigger, and she starts to twitch. <laughs> and in that moment, I realize I am dealing with a dangerous bird. So I'm standing there and I'm thinking, how am I going to handle this woman? How, how am I going to handle this? I'm certainly not going to meet her at her stress level because it's ridiculous. So I decide I'm going to try some humor. So I look her dead in the eye. I said, Joan. And then I mess with her. Can I call you Joan? <laughs> I said, I can see we got off to a bad start. I think we need to clear some of the negative energy between us, Joan. In fact, let's stop and take a cleansing breath together, shall we? And then I do this. Everybody do it with me, ready? And then I notice the vein pulsing on the side of Joan's forehead. And all I can think in that moment is, wow. If you're that stressed this early in the day over this, sing it with me, Joan. And the wheels on the bus go round and round. I have decided, finally, that I just, I can't save everybody. I'm pretty sure it's too late for Joan. <laughs> but what I can do is save myself. And what you can do is save yourself. Because she who laughs, laughs. Art Linkletter interviewed a 104-year-old woman named Dorothy. This cutest little old lady. I said, Dorothy? What's the best part of being at 104? And she says, well, Art, there's very little peer pressure. <laughs> and research shows that the average preschool child laughs 400 times a day, the average adult 21, and uh, excuse me, tw uh, 15 times a day, and the average person elderly, 85 and over, they say less a half a laugh a day. Sad, right? But I'm a comedian. First thing I think is, what's a half a laugh look like? <laughs> I just picture some 85-year-old woman in a walker going, ha! <laughs> I'm going to save the rest of that for tomorrow. She who laughs, laughs. And she who can laugh and does laugh helps others remember to laugh. And then she tells two friends, and she tells two friends, and so on, and so on, and so on. And so in closing, I'd like to leave you with one of my favorite quotes by poet May Sarton. I love this quote because it sums up in just a few words my entire philosophy on living well. 
Each day and the living of it must be a conscious creation in which discipline and order are relieved with some play and pure foolishness. I'm going to say that again. Thanks for asking. Because <laughs> you always are so, I didn't get that, I didn't get that. I wasn't really paying attention, but now I am. <laughs> this is for you. Each day and the living of it must be a conscious creation in which discipline and order are relieved with some play and pure foolishness. So, as you show up in your busy, meaningful, powerful lives, women, I implore you to stop on a regular basis and ask yourself, hey, have I had enough pure foolishness today? <laughs> My wish is that each of your days and the living of them will be conscious creations in which you never, ever, ever forget the power, the life-affirming power of laughter and the wisdom of pure foolishness. Thank you.